Hi everybody, this is Lou McNally, and uh, coming up next on Made in Maine, businesses from an islander's point of view. We'll stop into Deer Isle Granite in Deer Isle, where they've been working with Crotch Island Granite for years. And then we'll board the ferry. Overnight to Monhegan we're headed, and we'll visit with Monhegan House, which dates from the turn of the last century. Now I'm on Cliff Island in Casco Bay with the folks from Finest Kind Builders and Bakers EPD. We'll find out what that means and what pies, sawmills, construction sites, golf carts, boats all have in common next. And don't forget to look for the puzzler. Go to our website for the answer. All coming up on Made in Maine. Major funding for production of Made in Maine is provided by the Maine Department of Economic and Community Development, whose Maine Products Marketing Program introduces Maine's businesses to the world on the web at mainemade.com. By Key Bank, providing small business administration loans to businesses throughout the state. Don't forget to look for the puzzler during the show and then go to our website www.mpbc.org for the answer. You know, on the mainland, we take an awful lot of things for granted. When you think about it, uh, if we want to go to the store or to the office, we just hop in our cars and then go. If we want a contractor, for example, we just pick up the phone and make it happen. Well, are things really that much different on an island? Well, on some of the bigger islands, no. But on some of the smaller islands, we're going to find out. Can you keep up with business and the economy? And what's it like to work year-round on some of the smaller islands? We'll learn more from some folks on Cliff Island, off of which we are drifting right now. And we'll meet the folks that run Finest Kind Builders and Bakers, EPD. That's in a couple of minutes. First of all, we want to send you back in this direction a little ways further. Just north of Merchants Row on the east end of Penobscot Bay, where they've been quarrying granite for a very, very long time. Let's join with producer Kathy Gentner and videographer Chad Diamond with the Deer Isle Granite Company, on Deer Isle. Tell me, mister, did you see the boats of stone? Did you see them sailing south to honor Washington? From these silent quarries now so overgrown. We're on Crotch Island, just off Stonington. This is the last island quarry that's still functioning in New England. The island is currently owned by New England Stone, and we use this granite exclusively in our business. And great columns for cathedrals we have known. They first started quarrying this in about 1860. It required a lot more people to do it. Several hundred people were working out here. Now six people do the work of what 250 people did then, using more modern and environmentally friendly technology. It has here one of the finest quality granites that we can get. Uh, it's called Deer Isle Granite. This varied color shows up under a number of different kind of lights and is very attractive when used in the home, both for countertops and for accessories, which is where we come in. That was uh, obviously a piece of granite it comes in different forms and uh, thicknesses, and I take those and put them through a series of productions, starting from shaping with our saw, and then taking it from here over to our polishing table. We polish it all down, 
give that shiny look that Gerard Granite is known for. And then we chamfer it or we get this nice edge on the side. Then if the drill press needs to be involved uh, with clocks or candlesticks, I'll use that. From there, I'll blow it all off and get it out of my shop and take it down to my wife's department and uh, she takes it from there. Our manufacturing process is done right in our garage and then brought here into the basement where it's finished and shipped out. I take the product after it's done out in the shop out there. I have to make sure it's completely dry because I have to glue on the little bumpers and then I put a sealer on it to keep it from discoloring after you know it's been used. And then I put it in boxes and that out. Running this business lets me live here and be part of this uh, island community. I hope it's a, a situation where we can bring employment to the island in an industry that has long been a part of its heritage. I think what Walter Reed has done is to give us all the ability to own that little piece of Deer Isle Granite. The Deer Isle Granite Museum was uh, founded three years ago by a summer couple and the purpose of the museum really is to bring back a bygone era. Uh, granite quarrying uh, really made Stonington what it was at the turn of the century. You could easily count a thousand people directly or indirectly uh, that were involved in the granite industry. This was a booming, booming area. Uh, has been described in uh, a number of publications as like a Wild West town. The model behind us was made by GPI Models in Boston. Uh, it was designed uh, in cooperation with Mr. and Mrs. Frank Weil and uh, my husband and I. Uh, we went through photographs and a number of other steps to try and put together at least a representation of what Crotch Island would have looked like at the turn of the century. It's very important when people come to a museum that they be able to visualize what was there. Italians, Swedes, Norwegians, and Scots had poured onto Deer Island to work as quarrymen and stonecutters. Many hoped to earn and put away enough money to bring their families to America. The prevalence of granite on these islands is tremendous, whether we're talking about Crotch Island or Deer Isle. And that's what brought uh, many of these immigrants to Stonington at the turn of the century and before the turn of the century. You can see them from the shore, always going back for more. A steady stream stone to build a nation. The majority of the granite was transported by ship, uh, left on schooners, and uh, was transported to other areas. Granite really made um, a number of the buildings in the United States famous. Uh, probably the most famous location for Deer Isle granite is at Arlington National Cemetery and the grave site of John F. Kennedy. The Rockefeller Bowl, Museum of Fine Art, many of America's large uh, cathedrals, uh, Cathedral St. John the Divine, uh, many of these monuments um, really are a living history to Deer Isle granite. I think the demise of the granite industry in the 60s was that the popularity of granite and the expense of being used in these buildings, whether it was for facings, facades, or whatever, was just prohibitive. It no longer was needed. It was replaced by steel and concrete and a number of other building materials. The uh, transformation has come in that granite now uh, is really prized as countertops and uh, use in, in uh, homes and its uh, and, and products also. An important part of our business is the fact that we are integrating beauty with a piece of Maine history. Uh, the quarrying business has all but disappeared from the Maine coast and this is the last vestige of this sort of activity. We want to keep that alive as well as produce something that's both 
beautiful and functional. And here we are aboard the uh Christian Elf with uh, Roger Burley. Roger, how are you? Great, Lou. Good Roger, to meet you. Roger, you're the owner of uh, Finest Kind Builders and Bakers EPD. Inc. In oh, 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 Inc. Okay. Well, what's the EPD, first of all? Well, that came from uh, the start of our business, which used to be uh, Finest Kind Excavators. And we found ourselves in 1973 with, a, with an excavating uh, piece of equipment and in dealing with uh, changing uh, updating uh, septic systems, which were pretty primitive here, we yeah. decided to use EPD as excavation and preparation for defecation. Very nice. EPD. So well, you also work on docks here, too. We do. You? We've built uh, pretty much all the docks uh, on the island, uh, with a couple of exceptions, and uh, it's a staple of our business, the marine trade. In the summertime, uh, this float's hanging off all of them, so mm -hmm. we put them in in the spring and take them out in the fall. We build them, yep. install them, sell them to other islands whenever we can, and, and uh, we also do moorings. And you can see just the remaining few moorings that we have left off. Now, Cliff is one of the uh, one of the uh, year-round inhabited islands here in Casco Bay. It's, it's still one part of, the, of Portland, is that right? It's still part of Portland. It's one of uh, five year-round uh, inhabited year-round islands in, in Casco Bay, and 14 up and down the whole coast of Maine. Well, we know uh, Peaks, for example, they have their own fire department and public works, and uh, you know it's it's quite a big operation. This is a smaller island, though. How many people? About 75 will be here this winter, and it, it swells to 200 or 250 in the summer. But the the real residents are 75. With that small a, uh, a population, how do you find full-time work? Well. Uh, there's 140 cottages on the island and, and homes, and so we have no trouble finding work whatsoever. <laughs> we have trouble finding workers in this economy. Uh, run me through uh, uh, your year, what you do for work. Well, we kind of think it starts about the 1st of April when, when the weather starts to change mm -hmm. and we can get outside. Many of the summer people, there's 100 cottages worth of them, they want everything done by Memorial Day or the 1st of July. Oh, sure, yeah. Of course, yeah. and we can't get it all done, but we try like the devil. Uh, we go into a service mode for mm -hmm. July and August and leaky faucet, uh, load of wood chips, uh, whatever needs doing, we do it. Around Labor Day, everyone comes to us, or we go to them, and find out what their winter wishes are so we can schedule our winter work. Hopefully some of it's inside, right. doing new bathrooms or kitchens or additions. Mm -hmm. And we start shutting down our marine operation, which has head started in May. Yeah. Now we're taking out Pickling floats boats. and boats yeah. and, and stuff. and. Uh, then we go into the winter mode, which is pretty much those inside jobs and working in the woods. So any, any one of these, uh, these jobs, these uh, services that you offer, mm -hmm. wouldn't really keep you going year round. No, you've got to do some of everything here. Well, now one of the things that uh, is, is kind of indigenous to some of the other islands, uh, peaks in particular, are the island junkers. Ah. <laughs> Indeed, what a challenge. It, my transition from winter to, to summer to winter, per, from summer to winter person, was in 1970. And I came across a, a fisherman who had a passion to get rid of junk cars, including several of his own. <laughs> so at that time, it meant building mini reefs for lobsters to live in yeah. underwater. Well, that was not a, a good thing, but youthful enthusiasm right. and uh, seasoned commitment, we did it. A few years later, we started having bulk material come on great big mammoth barges. And so when they'd bring in our crushed rock or our sand or our loam, we would have dragged all the, the then available junks out of the woods and the fields and take them down to the ferry landing back there. And they'd use their huge crane to, to crane them aboard. And so we would get rid of them that way. And after a while, we had a couple of hundred hauled off the island. Wow. Amazing how that money yeah. could build up. Yeah. And at the same time, uh, we started uh, marketing golf carts. Well, of course. And <laughs> that's the answer. <laughs> So we now have very few junkers. We have a lot of golf carts, which don't please everybody, but most of the people like to walk or bike, yep. and they use golf carts when they have guests or haul freight. And, uh, and then we have our own trucks to help with bigger stuff. Sounds great. Well, listen, why don't we head on inshore and take a look at the rest of the operation? Okay. All righty. They're going to go bad. <laughs> fresh open air, which is what we relish out here. I don't make any reefs out of them, are you? Uh, so this is the mode of transportation, this, this eh? This is it, Lou. All this right. Is, this is the new way. So we load our gear on the back. Yeah. Uh, put yours in the basket sure. here. Beautiful. And off we go. 
So it's a construction site we're headed for now. It is. We're tearing off the, the front of a cottage, which was once a and b about 50, 60 years ago. And uh, the uh, new, brand new owner is, uh, wants to keep the same lines and make it a single family uh, make house. Make it a single family house. Oh, nice. So this and is. This is a part of your year-round work, right? It is indeed, and we—it's it, got some inside work because when the north wind blows oh. here, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's cold. So here we are. Here we are. All you right. See the, the lumber's right been there. delivered. This afternoon, the crew is going to be tearing off the front of the house. So, and how much of uh, of the work that you do here is actually uh, construction projects? Well, we do we do construction, serious construction, from about Labor Day to uh, Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. And do that's service work in the summertime. I imagine getting lumber out here is, is a bit of a problem, and you've taken uh, that into your own hands too. We we certainly have. We have it come either by the the ferry, or by a barge, and we actually make our own lumber. Which you is, make your uh, own do. We do indeed. Let's go take a look at that. Absolutely, we'll do that next. So there's the docks, there's the uh, boats, there's the construction, and now there's the sawmill too. Yep, and this is, uh, I'd like you to meet uh, our general manager, Dale Dyer, who this is uh, his uh, charge. Dale, how are you? Good. And well, I'll see you back at the office. Indeed. All righty, there'll be more to do, I'm sure. What's up with the sawmill on the island here? You got enough wood? No, we have plenty of wood. Uh, back in 98, we had a microburst of air uh, come through the island and uh, gusts up to 100 miles an hour. I remember that and, storm, uh, yeah. Yeah. It uh, devastated a good portion of the north side of the island. Mm -hmm. And so being as with the resourceful islanders that we are, we decided to purchase a mill and, and utilize the lumber that's down. But you can't get uh, lumber out of all of it. What do you do with the rest of it? Well, we, we, the slabs that we have, we uh, will chip that up into mm -hmm. chips and then we, we sell that or give it away. Um, the sawdust that's left over, um, a lot of people seem to use that for all kinds of things, uh, for backfill, mulch. And gardens, mulch. Yeah tons of things like that. Um, so right now we've been doing this for about two years and we've had no problem getting rid of all the material. Dale, I'm going to let you get back to work. Thanks Great. a lot. Thank I know you. there's a lot to do. If it isn't this, it's... Always something else. Something else. Okay. And we'll also check in with uh, Roger too once more before we go and find out what the uh, baker's part of Finest Kind Builders and Bakers EPD means. But first for you folks, it's a magical step back in time. A real fine trip. If you haven't done it in person, now's your chance to see what it's going to look like. Let's join with producer Lisa Gardner and videographer Chad Diamond for an overnight stay at Monhegan House on Monhegan Island. Well, uh, you can definitely tell the people who are going to enjoy their stay here rather than the people who aren't. When you see someone walk off the boat with high heels on, you know that they're probably not going to come back. We're charming. That's, what, that's our thing. If you want convenience go to a Holiday Inn. We're here to uh, capture the charm of the island. My family history goes back seven generations. The original hotel was run by my great-great-grandmother, Kate Brackett, and her husband was a, a sea captain and a, a sailor and, and a fisherman, and that's, that was his love, and he certainly helped her in her endeavors with the, the Von Higgin house, but it was always something that the women took hold of. I guess the fact that it, it was a woman doing it all the time, it, it's a, kind of a special thing. You know, it's, uh, it certainly shows that it, it's not just nowadays that women are, are becoming, you know, more in the business sense. It's always been there, but I don't think we made such a big deal out of it. <laughs> just somebody's got to do the work. The goal of the refurbishing has been to bring the inn back to the way my great-grandmother once had it. And in the pictures that I'd seen of the original Monhigan house, which was actually quite a bit larger, uh, to bring it back to that era. So when people came to the island, they weren't coming to the Holiday Inn. They were coming to a place that was somewhat like it used to be. It was back, you know, a little bit before Prohibition when my great-grandfather was a rum runner and he'd, uh, he'd help out my grandmother doing things. I'm what you call front desk manager. I sit at the front desk, wait for everybody to show up. 
No key, so you're all set. All paid for. Dinner's at 5.30. Once they get through that door, I talk to them. I basically tell them, your room's ready. Go on up to number seven, and then we don't have to worry about anything until you have to check out three days later. And people, well, what do you do out there? And I said, well, you come out to explore, um, you know, relax it on the front porch, do some hiking. Don't worry about the telephone. Don't worry about anything. Just relax. And now they've got the restaurant running full time, and we have had the same cook for three years, and he's done a great job. Him and his family, his whole family comes out. They uh, certainly enjoy the island, and everybody enjoys his cooking. And baked potato, twice baked potato or rice? rice. People come out here, and there's you know there's no McDonald's to eat at, so they're uh, they're all worried about where they're going to eat. So uh, it's brought a lot, a lot more business to the hotel. This is fine. My job here is, to, is hostess, and I'm also the manager of the dining room. Ready? People just come in and they enjoy the, being comfortable, and as if they're sitting in my kitchen, and that's the way I like them to feel. It gets a little hectic, especially in August, with all the different people who come out here. A friend of mine told me that uh, to be sane and work here on the island, you need to make it to the backside of the island at least once a week. And all your troubles and cares just go away once you see the, the cliffs, the, the, the beauty out here. You see life through a different aspect. Peaceful and quiet. I'm attracted to places that are peaceful and quiet and this fits the bill. Even the people, they just kind of ignore you unless you talk to them. They're very aloof. They, it's like you're not even around, which is great. I think the Monteheng House is very rustic. It's very inviting. Now, if you want a place to have luxury, it's not a place to be. It's more like it's more laid back. And I will definitely come back to this place. Well, you know, there are ghosts in that hotel. <laughs> There's definitely some spirits walking those floors. I feel presence of my mother, my grandmother, my great grandmother, and I think because it, it's thrived so well that I think that the that my relatives who once ran the inn would be very happy of the way things are going. It's a big accomplishment at the end of the season to feel really good about running the hotel for another year. It's 101 years now, or you know, it's, it's, it's really neat, that feeling. Well, here we are now back on Cliff Island in Casco Bay. And uh, one of the finest things about island life, of course, is the island food. But the other fine thing about island life is, is the time. It's the ability to step off the boat onto the dock and turn off the clock. It's uh, always been that way on the island, too, hasn't it, Roger? Indeed it has, uh, Lou. We started off just uh, as a couple of guys who uh, bought a backhoe and we're going to take care of... Uh, septic systems and foundations and other projects and, and lo and behold one thing led to another and to another and to another and, and, uh, and by 1987, 17 years later, um, we found that we had to incorporate and so had some friends out for the weekend and we we're playing with new names that we right. might call a company because we no longer were primarily excavators, we did everything. So alliteration became the theme of the evening and so we're looking for combinations. Uh, uh, of words and, and letters, and so it turned out to be builders and bakers. And there's a reason for this. The reason for that is that, that the folks visiting us were aware that I love to bake and breads and cakes and pies and, and Christmas cookies, and so uh, I've also baked a pie for every employee for his or her birthday uh, over the years and uh, give this stuff away to the library fair and, and things. And so 
Build with some bakers it was. So here's a, here's a piece made of our one pie. And made one for you guys today. <laughs> and uh, have a bite. Well, I shall in just a minute. But thanks for having us by. I appreciate it very much. And for you folks, just want to remind you that uh, it shows to Goya once again that the folks here in Maine have their ways about making things work, even under the most adverse conditions, particularly on the islands. Oh, we can get our high-speed internet connections and our telephones and keep up with just about everything else. But uh, to be able to make it under those kinds of harsh conditions, well, that's what it's all about, and it's all made in Maine. This is Lou McNally. Hope you enjoyed the show. Join us again for another edition of Made in Maine. Ah, this is the good part here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. Finest kind. Finest kind. Oh. Major funding for production of Made in Maine is provided by the Maine Department of Economic and Community Development, whose Maine Products Marketing Program introduces Maine's businesses to the world on the web at mainemade.com. By Key Bank, providing small business administration loans to businesses throughout the state. Did you see the puzzler question during the show? Well, you can get the answer at our website, www.mpbc.org.